Um, so welcome guys. Uh, in this video, what we are going to mainly cover is the Wipro essay writing section. Uh, we'll give you a lot of rules. We'll uh, tell you the most important topics about the Wipro NLTA or Wipro essay writing section and the most asked questions. Uh, so let's begin. So first of all, there's, there's an AI system uh, that is in place uh, which grades your Wipro essay writing section. Uh, so there's no human being that is grading. Uh, it is an AI system. So I'll give you a brief about AI system on what parameters would it give you marks and you know how you can fool the AI itself to write or to fetch more marks, right? Uh, then we'll tell you the grading scheme of the AI system. So obviously it gives you plus minus one or two or 10 marks based upon the uh, mistakes that you're making or based upon the good things that you're doing, right? And then at the very end, we'll take a sample essay and I'll tell you what is correct and what is wrong and how the student has written it. Uh, then we'll tell you the importance of diction, structuring, signpost words, etc, etc. So these are very important because the AI system has diction as marks, has signpost as marks. So, you know, uh, very good things with uh, in this video. Make sure that you watch this video till the very end. Also, one more important thing is that uh, we are doing a giveaway round. So the top five commenters on this video, uh, which post the best things about Prep Star, ask the best doubts are going to get the free online classes for Webproof completely free of cost. Uh, so make sure that you uh, comment on the video. It just hardly would take you about 10 seconds. And then the results of that would be announced on an Instagram page. So the link of that is also given on uh, in the description of the video, right? So let's start. Make sure that you have a pen and paper and uh, then only you begin with the video. Okay. So uh, let's start here. So the sample topics for the essay and these were asked just recently in the web. recent ones but on the website prep insta website we have posted about the uh, about 50 wipro topics uh, that are asked in uh, essay writing and uh, we gave all the for online class students those 50 topics 95 percent of those got the exact same 50 topics uh, i think there were two or three students which got new essay writing so you know all the topics that have been mentioned on our uh, wipro essay writing page are only the ones that are going to be asked with the maximum probability. So the link of that page is also given in the description of, the, of that video. Uh, so after watching this video, probably you can visit that page, right? So, so let's start with the AI system. So obviously, uh, there are 3 lakh people giving Wipro exam every year. So to for Wipro to get people to read about uh, 3 lakh essay writing, so let's first start with the AI system, right? Uh, so basically, uh, Wipro exam is given every year by 3 lakh people. And in fact, more than that, if you cover the off-campus exam as well, right? So Wipro cannot have people checking your uh, or manually checking your uh, essay that you are writing. So what they do is the written communication test is graded by Intellimetric uh, software, which the same software is also used by GMAT. And um, so what we are going to do is we are going to give you how Intellimetric generally rates or give marks based upon essay writing. The Intellimetric is a very, very sophisticated software. Uh, so what the research that they've done is if a human is, uh, you know, probably judging an essay, uh, he is able to, uh, you know, only encounter four to five parameters out of 10 on, you know, spelling mistakes, errors in grammars, etc, etc. However, there says nine by 10. So it is two X better than how a human would judge. It does not only does very, very small things, but it also is able to understand how you are writing it. It is also ab is able to find conclusion. It is also is, is able to find examples and references because it is just like how Google search engine works. So what you are writing, it puts it inside of their AI system. It does search and it understands your essay better than what a human being would understand. Right. Crores and crores of rupees have been, uh, you know, invested in this Right. So uh, I'll just explain you what and how Intellimetric would grade uh, the essay that you are writing. So first of all, the first parameter here is the definitive approach that you should be following. So what do you mean by definitive approaches? You should either be supporting the idea or be against it. You cannot jump in and for against at the same time. You need to have a definitive stand. So for example, if you are saying uh, that about, is demonetization good or not, right? 
uh so in that case obviously demonetize you have to take a definitive stamp either demonetization has to be good or demonetization has to be bad you cannot say okay demonetization brought a lot of uh money back into the circulation of india but uh, it caused a lot of problem to the society right so you have to take a definitive stand the software will understand if you are not taking definitive stand and uh, you know there are 10 marks for taking definitive stand approximately we do not know how how much is the penalty but automatically if there is definitive stand you get 10 marks if you probably sway away let's say if you took uh, for uh, or if you were, were writing for the topic and probably one time if you got against the topic they are going to probably cut two marks or one marks we are not sure about exactly this but we definitely know that okay 10 marks is going to be given to you maximum for definitive approach so make sure that you follow this right moving further uh, obviously this becomes the most basic and most important one and where you can uh, you know uh, ignore losing losing out marks so definitive approach was a positive marker here uh, this punctuation capitalization etc etc is a negative marker so you do not get any positive points however marks are cut for you right so for example if you uh, if you for example make any punctuation error right in that case for every punctuation error minus 1 by 2 marks are going to be cut for you if you for example make a capitalization error in that case obviously uh, minus 1 by 2 marks is going to cut for you for one mistake so if you make 10 mistakes in that case uh, 10 into 1 by 2 is basically minus 5 marks given to you however this is capped at maximum minus 10 marks so if you make 100 mistakes in that case uh, minus 50 marks will not be there obviously minus 10 marks will be there so let's also take this example right so here however then there is comma so the intellect metric system is able to understand that after however which happens to be a sign post word there should be a comma and then identifying the interest of the students because uh, so this is basically an example that you are taking any particular example that you are taking should be in apostrophes or should be in quotations so it is able to understand that, that a quotation is missing this is a punctuation error let's cut minus 1 by 2 marks right then again uh, one more important thing is this h is uh, capital if the h is not capital again capitalization error and then missing out on this final uh, full stop again minus 1 by 2 error right or minus 1 by 2 negative marking so you know make sure this is one of the easiest thing that you can do uh, make sure that you do not make any punctuation errors and capitalization error right let's move forward right so then the next thing is paragraphization so paragraph for paragraphization you get maximum 10 marks uh, minimum there have to be approximately three paragraphs right what i would suggest to you anywhere between 3 to 7 paragraphs is good uh, so ideally we will i will also tell you about structuring if uh, later the paragraph also have to be structured so for example the first paragraph has to be about introduction the second paragraph could be about you know uh, expanding the topic giving examples making references discussing it argumentating about it and then final paragraph has to be a conclusion because the intelligent uh, intelimetric system is looking for a conclusion okay that you are concluding so i'll also tell you about that future in the video but if in case uh, maximum 10 marks is given for example if you write only two paragraph we do not know about the penalty here but probably let's say two marks are cut if you write more than eight paragraphs then again two two marks are cut so anywhere between 3 to 7 paragraphs is okay is perfectly fine but not less than that not more than that right and then obviously the next basic thing that comes to be the spellings so for each spelling error you are given a maximum um, or you know, the maximum negative marking for spelling is capped at minus 20 and for each spelling error that you are making minus 1 by 2 marks so what a lot of students do is that they use a lot of heavy words they use a lot of creative words etc etc which are long and which they think okay if they write a particular word uh, which is very extravagant Uh, they are probably going to get good marks however this is not true uh, you need to write you know you you can choose to simply write uh, you know uh, easy words fairly usable words which you are sure about that if you that you know the spelling of so if you do not know of spelling of a particular word probably reframe the sentence with a particular different word that you know the spelling of right so spelling are minus 1 by 2 marks okay so let's move ahead then this is the most important thing i would say out of the whole video that i am taking diction is uh, the most important factor here which is basically 10 marks for good diction so let's let's see what diction is diction is basically the 
using the maximum variety of words. So, for example, if you've written an essay of 300 words and the total number of unique words are in that uh, or in that essay are 200. So, your diction value becomes 2 by 3. That is 200 by 300. If in case the unique word that you are using are 100, right? So, in that case, 100 by 300 becomes your diction. So, obviously, having higher diction is better. We do not know about the internal nomenclature, but maximum 10 marks is for good diction, right? Uh, so, what you can do, obviously, do not use fancy words, do not use uh, extravagant words, but use different, different types of words. So, if you have used however, again and again, probably use uh, instead of however, reframe the same sentence, use although. For example, if you use uh, a particular word, let's say hot, in that case, you can use mild. And, you know, synonyms you can use to increase the diction, increase the variety of the word that you're using. This is very, very important. And this is what students fail to do, right? Uh, so, they are basically looking on uh, the number of, or, or the vocabulary skills of yours rather than using words that are difficult wherein you can use words that are difficult, that are unique, but you make sure that you know the spelling, right? Moving further, uh, the structuring of the paragraph is very, very important. So, first of all, what I would do is, for example, I have a so, uh, topic, for example, demonetization. So, uh, is demonetizing or was demonetization good or bad? So, in, uh, in the first one, I will introduce the topic that demonetization was intru introduced by the Modi government and in so and so year. And uh, uh, it's panned about, for example, this, 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 this in many days. And uh, to discuss about the positives and negatives of demonetization, then you come to the next uh, paragraph wherein you are doing, uh, wherein, you are, wherein you are portraying your arguments, wherein you are exploring the topics, wherein you are uh, giving examples of the difficulty faced by uh, people. For example, you can give that the, it was very difficult for the people who lived in remote areas, wherein there was no access to banks, wherein there was no access to uh, probably ATMs as well, right? Uh, so, many, many examples of how demonetization was difficult you can give. Finally, you can give a conclusion that uh, and, and then again, you have to take a definitive stand, right? So, at conclusion, your definitive stand should be there. So, you can say demonetization was a positive mood move made by the government. However, it was completely mismanaged and eventually ended, ended up being a complete disaster because it was very abrupt and ill-managed. So, here you are saying in conclusion, it was bad. So, you are completely giving a hint. Uh, to the system or to the AI system, okay, I have a definitive stand that, okay, it is bad. So, you cannot say the conclusion, so you can say positives and negatives about uh, in the argument and exploration section, but at the conclusion, you have to be definitive. In the conclusion, you cannot say demonetization was a mixed, mixed feeling or demonetization was also good, was also bad. Uh, this is, uh, this is something that you would get penalized for, right? So, again, structuring is important. First paragraph, topic. Second paragraph, uh, you can give arguments and exploration. Third and fourth paragraph, you can give about examples and the hardships phase or examples and exploration. The final paragraph has to be about conclusion. You can Google how you can conclude in different ways so that you have, would have many ideas upon the best way to concluding a particular or different examples of concluding it. Uh, the AI system is very smart enough to understand, okay, this is your conclusion. So, you do not have to worry about it. Okay, so then the next thing that would be important would be signpost words. So, so the, the signpost words are, however, although, although, uh, nevertheless, the less and uh, because. So, these are basically the word that shift the meaning or that give emphasis and nevertheless or uh, either or. So, these are the words uh, that basically a particular uh, topic was being said and then you either want to emphasize upon that topic with a signpost word or you want to completely shift away the focus. For example, however, I would, uh, I would say demonetization was a good uh, scheme that was bought by the government. However, it ended up being bad. So, you know, using signpost words is very important. I would say that at least use 10 signpost words. What you can do is uh, you can Google the exam or Google the list of signpost words. Uh, the AI system is clearly giving five marks for signposts and make sure that you use all of those words. It would also increase the diction level of your uh, of the essay that you are writing. 
right uh, then i had moving further then again this is very basic a lot of people ask that okay what should be the length of the uh, uh, of the essay that we are we are writing the maximum uh, negative marking for length is 10 marks uh, the length cap uh, so what wipro says basically is you should write the essay between 100 to 300 words however for intelli uh, or intellimetric uh, so you can either write zero word also you have complete flexibility there right but for intellimetric the maximum marks 10 are given between 200 for 300 for at least wipro so they can change it and tweak a little bit based upon if the exam is for wipro or if the exam is for gmat etc etc right uh, so minus 1 by 2 marking for missing the length what so for example if you are writing 310 words minus 1 by 2 if you are writing 320 words then minus 1 if you are writing 330 then minus 1 and a half right again if you are writing 190 in that case minus 1 by 2 so on so forth right so uh, ideally write anywhere between 200 to 300 words right so the hacks of what i would say is first write the whole essay or write the draft essay and then use that to or you or or edit and improve the essay by you know changing words improving diction changing words to their synonym so that a higher diction is there, using more signpost words, proofreading for example if you made any grammatical error, proofread for example if there is any uh, spelling error or capitalization error or punctuation error. Right. Again, one thing that I forgot to mention, there are plus 10 marks. Uh, uh, let, just give me one second. So, in fact, I'll just start from this side. So, this is an example of the maximum marks and or the uh, summary of marks that are going to be given in Wipro. I want you to take a screenshot of this page because be even just before going for the exam, I want you all uh, to remember all of these points completely and correctly. So, it would be really helpful for you just to refresh maybe 5 minutes before the exam that okay, I have to use all these, I have to keep in mind all of these points. One thing that I forgot to mention in this uh, and that is my bad uh, before making this right, there are 10 marks for grammar. And obviously, this is pretty basics. Try not to make any grammar mistakes. Uh, a lot of people would use Grammarly to identify okay, wherein I am making grammar, or grammar mistakes. The intellimetric tool is similar to Grammarly, it is able to understand, okay, you've made some mistake, right? So, 10 marks for grammar, right? So, then again, uh, moving to the next one. So, let's take a sample essay. This was written for the, by one of our students and uh, it, uh, so I'll just tell you what are the positive things and negative things in that. So, first, uh, the, so he did not know that Wipro is not going to give a formatter. So, you cannot write these bullet points. Uh, you do not have the option of an editor. Right, so you can only write paragraphs and you know shift paragraph. So, right, so this was not his mistake, obviously, but he wrote he, he gave it, gave it to us. So obviously, I wanted to focus upon that that you are not going to uh, you are not going to be able to write in bulleted points. So what you can do is you know write points as bullet, but don't use bullets and shift paragraphs like that. So no problem. This uh, the second mistake that he's made. It is too long. It is approximately four hundred words. So he is getting penalized a lot. Uh, so these are the most uh, or the most important two mistakes that he's made. Apart from that, uh, I'll just tell you, he's done a lot of good things in this paragraph as well, right? So first paragraph, media, media has become the uh, limelight of the entertainment industry. It provides uh, information about each and every aspect related to the society and also aid the dissemination of ideas in the every corner of globe. There are there are types of media such as this, 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 this. So first good thing is he has introduced the topic correctly. So introduction, complete points. Then uh, what he is doing, he is also using words like dissemination. However, I would not recommend using words that you do not know the spelling of. What he said, okay, I know the meaning of this word as well. I know the spelling of this word as well. So it is no problem for me. Then again, good words, uh, good words such as is also a signpost word and also it is looking for examples that okay you support your idea with examples so this is a good thing wherein he is giving examples the uh, intellimet or intellimetric system is giving good marks here right and then again following is a signpost word and can this is how you can influence the society so here is where he is argumentating and exploring the idea which is very good right so here also he is giving more examples here or and then different types of things media can have a negative impact on the young believer whatever is shown on social media website as a result right so probably uh, 
so this is going to be uh, you know high alerted by the intellimetric system that as a result could be a conclusion that uh, the user is making so i just want you to know about that examples he is giving again which is very good thing for intellimetric it is a known fact again this is a very good thing that he is done that media has a bias towards different parties by which they tend to manipulate the information and they try to project one side or the other finally we can conclude so he is clearly written for intellimetric okay this is my conclusion media is a double edged sword it has both advantages and disadvantages if used properly uh, or else if we can con social upheaval of the society right so again uh, what he is done incorrectly however this is correct but here he said okay it has both positives and negatives right so in the conclusion he has to take a definitive stand so he can say uh, probably he can reframe the same sentence as okay media is a double edged sword it has both uh, is advantages and uh, disadvantages however i conclude that in the current scenario it is bad because there is no regulations so at least you are telling the intro or the intellimetric system that my conclusion is bad so you can talk about positive and negative which is really good but your conclusion has to be definitive so you know i said the same thing that he said i said it has positives and negatives but in conclusion i said it is bad because there is in the current scenario there is no proper overview by the government of there is no proper geographical analysis of it how it is being used so you can also give examples so for example in bangladesh the rohingya settlements had to move to uh, or in myanmar they had to move to bangladesh and india the reason being because by the local uh, myanmar people on social media uh, platforms like facebook and youtube etc there was a hate uh, uh, campaign spread by them and it was resulted in so much in whatsapp also that there were lynchings there were uh, you know killings by all of these people and they had to shift the country altogether because the government was not overseeing it it was a public movement complete all together in a social media wherein they were spreading fake news about a particular community and lakhs 1 lakh people had to move from a particular uh, country just because of fake news right so you can give examples in exploration or in the medium or in the middle paragraphs right 